Good morning, everyone. Hi, I'm Chris Jepps from Expert App, and I'm here with my colleague, Rich Webb. And we're going to be walking you through a quick uh, bit of information and a demo of our data assistant tool for ArcGIS Pro. Um, <clears throat> just a little uh, note about Expert App. We are an oil and gas and energy specialist, GIS services and products provider. We're based in Europe and the US, and we are an Esri Gold partner and have been for many years, and we're part of the GTEC group. We're here today to look at one of our extensions for ArcGIS Pro. As I said, it's called Data Assistant. We do have a couple of other extensions for uh, exploration workflows and some unconventional workflows, which is useful to be aware of. Um, the kind of things we'll be doing in Data Assistant today will essentially create data um, that you can analyze in um, your own workflows, but also in, in our other products. Um, so what is Data Assistant? As I say, it's an extension for ArcGIS Pro, and it helps you move data from your subsurface geologic and geophysical interpretation systems into ArcGIS Pro. Uh, there is also a version for ArcMap. Uh, and you can also use Data Assistant to export your GIS data into formats that can be read by your um, geology and geophysics interpretation systems. So the kind of systems and formats supported uh, support software applications such as Kingdom, Petrel, the Landmark Suite, as well as more generic file formats such as Segwai, Ucoa, and so on. Alongside the import export tools within Data Assistant, um, there are capabilities to view seismic image data, deviation surveys, um, downhole well log curves, uh, and also exchange color ramps so that you can get your grids and uh, other maps looking uh, identical to the way they do in your interpretation system, such as Petrel or Kingdom. During the demo today, we'll be showing you how Data Assistant works from one of its main interfaces, which is the menu bar in ArcGIS Pro. But just bear in mind, as you see the demo, most of the tools that are available in Data Assistant can also be run from the model builder window, um, can be added to toolboxes uh, and your own geoprocessing workflows. And that also means that they can be called from the Python window and added to Python scripts. So this allows you to use the tools within your own workflows, but also add pre and post processing um, to really streamline your data management workflows. Okay, so I'm gonna hand you over to Rich, who's now going to show you a demo. Okay, thanks, Chris. Um, so my name is Rich Webb. I'm the product specialist here at Expert App, and uh, I'm gonna take you through um, a demo of the data assistant uh, add-in. This is a, Pro window with the, the data assistant tab at the top with all its uh, handy uh, and useful uh, tools. And we're looking at an area here of, uh, of North America in, in Wyoming. And I'm just going to zoom into an area here uh, known as Teapot Dome. And we're going to take a look at uh, some data uh, in this area, importing it uh, and using some of the various uh, tools that data assistant has to offer. So I've got a, uh, a folder here in Windows Explorer, which has a uh, bunch of uh, various data types. So I have uh, trail faults, uh, landmark wells, uh, a couple of uh, grids uh, and some seismic. And if I open uh, one of these uh, formats, you guys seeing that, am I gonna have to share this as well? So here I have a, a file that I've exported uh, already from Petrel. Um, and this is a Petrel Wells uh, file. And those that are familiar with Petrel and the formats uh, will recognize uh, this type of format with the well and the various data uh, associated uh, with that. So I'll go back to the uh, Pro window now. So we've taken a look at that folder and uh, what I'm going to do is use the, the, 
the most useful tool in my opinion the import all tool and uh what i'm going to do with that is point it at that folder uh, that i just showed you with all those uh different data types that i've already exported from the likes of trail uh, and kingdom that's its application data folder if i hit okay uh, on that you'll see here this uh this matrix below has become populated with all the files that were in there uh, and the tool has identified uh, the data type that um, so i then choose the projection uh, of the files in this case it's uh, the wyoming state plane and then i'm going to pop it into a geo database. I'll just create a new one here. Just call this new data example. And hit OK there and then run. So with this uh, amount of files, it will probably take uh, a couple of minutes uh, to do its, do its work. Um, and whilst that's all ongoing, of course, the good thing about uh, Pro and GeoDatabase is that the map and things like that are still uh, accessible. So I can dock this, for example, to the side. I can move the map around, zoom in and out to get a better. So you're not just stuck waiting uh, for the tool to finish. I can open up uh, the details window, for example. You'll start to see uh, the messages coming through of what's uh, happening at that particular uh, moment in time with the tool and if I scroll down all the way to the bottom and open up the messages uh, you'll start to see uh, these messages coming through of what's happening uh, exactly uh, in the tool at the moment so we're just passing uh, some wells uh, so I suspect we're we're somewhere down in landmark OWX wells or maybe even down at the uh, kingdom project database so it's just doing the final uh, parts of that by the looks of things. We're on ZMAP grid. And it's just going through all those uh, individual things uh, and uh, finishing up. So Portrayal Wells heads data is coming in now. And it's just supports all those regular formats that uh, you guys who use Kingdom, Landmark, uh, and the trail uh, will be familiar with. Okay, so that's uh, that's finished all its uh, importing there. So uh, you get a nice uh, green message saying it's completed. Uh, and I'll close uh, those guys down uh, for now. Uh, so here we're left with all our, our imports and uh, I'm just gonna tidy up uh, the display a little bit so we can, we can take a look uh, at um, some of uh, these a bit closer. So I'll take some wells uh, up to the top and I shall take uh, some faults as well. Got a set of faults down here, some patrol faults. Pop that guy up there. And we also want uh, some 2D seismic as well. So we'll have these geographics, uh, 2D lines. So we've got a nice mix of um, different format types. And I'll just turn off some of these other ones so we can get a nice uh, unobstructed view uh, of those selected data. So I've got a patrol grid. And I'm going to change uh, that color bar in the background uh, in a sec. But first up, let's change uh, the wells to look uh, a bit more like oil and gas symbols. Uh, let's just import uh, the symbology here from uh, one that I made earlier. And I've got my symbology here and I'll just hit run on that and you start to recognize uh, wells looking a bit more like oil and gas wells uh, than just dots so now I'm going to use another one of uh, data assistance really handy tools this is the convert color ramp tool 
And this, I can export a color ramp from any of the supported uh, formats and apply it to a grid uh, in Arches Pro. I can also do the reverse and I can export uh, a grid from Pro into a specific format and you can take that over to your uh, interpretation um, uh, project. So I have uh, a set of uh, color ramps in here that I had already exported uh, from Patrol. Patrol color ramps. So now I'm going to show you guys uh, another one of our useful tools in Data Assistant, the Convert Color Ramp tool. And what I can do with this is either apply uh, a color ramp from a particular interpretation project that I've already exported, uh, or do the, the converse and export a, uh, a color ramp and put it into a particular interpretation project product uh, format. So I'm going to apply a patrol color ramp uh, to this uh, raster layer here, and change it from a, from a black and white. You edit this bit out. because I've got it on a customer name folder. I've got a particular set of uh, Petrel color ramps um, already exported from Petrel uh, that I'm going to use. So I'm going to use this rainbow one here. I just hit OK and apply. And it will apply that Petrel uh, color ramp uh, to that uh, raster in Arches Pro. I can also use this uh, nice handy label seismic lines tool to uh, quickly uh, label up this, this 2D uh, survey and I just hit apply on that. You start to see something that looks a lot more familiar and a lot more like a interpretation uh, project. Zooming in here and I can turn on the faults, for example, get some more geological data in there. You can easily identify some, maybe some areas of missed pay in this, this amplitude map uh, between the faults. So that's the end of the kind of basic uses demo. Uh, I'm going to flip over now to uh, a 3D window and show you a couple of the uh, more visual and uh, complex uh, capabilities. So, so now I'm going to show you guys the, uh, the SegY uh, Explorer tool. And all I do is select that from the seismic dropdown. Uh, I choose my, my input file, which uh, I have this uh, line B file here, which is a, a 2D line uh, in this, this map in the background, this northern cross-cutting one. So I select my data type, I select my navigation location uh, in the file. I can check these kinds of things by flipping over to the trace preview tab, uh, and we see that this has X and Y values. So it's a, an indicator that's a good thing. I then check on the create multi patch feature, and because this seismic's uh, time data, I have to input a rough uh, depth conversion. And then I choose uh, an output location. So I'm just going to pop it in the, the new database that I created. Hit save uh, and hit run. That's reading the traces directly out of the segy uh, file. It's taking navigation and plotting a, a multi-patch feature. So essentially a picture of uh, that seismic data from those traces and it'll put it in the uh, correct location according, of course, to your um, depth conversion. And if I just close that there, you'll see that, that 2D uh, seismic line, just zoom in a little bit and kind of pan, just to give you an idea that that is uh, located below the surface and along that, that 2D line, that line B uh, across here. Another uh, new tool that I'd like to show you guys is uh, the deviation survey importer uh, and the uh, last file importer. Again, these are going to look uh, really great in this 3D window. So first up, 
Uh, we need to import a deviation survey because we have to have a borehole to plot uh, last curves uh, along. So I happen to have uh, some well data in here, a uh, deviation survey uh, first up. So I just select that file. Again, really important uh, projection system. I'm just going to take the defaults for the, the feature class. The measured depth unit is feet. Uh, we have a survey header row that you can change uh, if you need to. And the, the deviation survey is created using measure depth, inclination, uh, and azimuth uh, measurements. You can choose these uh, for uh, your columns uh, in, your, in your file. We can then link it to a surface location. So I have this set of points uh, that represent wells. And what I can do is choose that layer choose the attribute that contains the well number, so borehole number, and then I can find that well, that's all the wells. Uh, and I happen to know that the well I want is number 150, 51AX28, and that populates that well surface location. You can manually input this if you don't have this, this, uh, this layer and you know the XY. So I hit uh, run for that, and it will read off those measure depth, inclination, uh, an azimuth bits of data from your deviation uh, file and create a uh, 3D uh, borehole uh, geometry. And that has completed. And you just saw that uh, flick in the background. But if I just turn off a couple of uh, these guys uh, just to show uh, where that uh, borehole is. give it a bit of a pan, maybe turn off the seismic line as well. And you'll see that borehole there uh, linked, if I just turn this back on again actually, linked uh, at the top to the, to the well uh, itself. And there we see that, that borehole linked uh, to, the, to the surface location. Now I've got a borehole, what I can do is use another of the Wells tools, the import last log curves tool, and place uh, a last curve uh, in exactly where it should be uh, along uh, a borehole. So again, if I go into my well data, pick up the last file, set the projection, I'm just gonna take the default feature class, and then I tell it what the well path layer is. So it's the one we, we just created here. Uh, the measured depth is, is correctly in feet. And then I can choose the curves from the log file, what I want to import. So I'm just gonna be uh, pretty basic here and just import the gamma ray. Uh, this is, you can just control where, uh, how close to the borehole and how far away the log will plot. And here you can, you can start to uh, segment the log uh, itself. So this is going to import as just one color and using the segment outputs, uh, output features option, I can break though the log curve down into uh, say one foot segments. So if I zoom in here, you'll see that gamma ray curve is pitched along uh, the borehole in the correct location. If I Flip over to uh, another map just to so, show you a couple of like uh, more um, complex examples. Uh, what I can do is I've got a, a log curve that I created earlier, that gamma ray one uh, that I had already segmented. And I can use then ArcGIS Pro's uh, symbology to, to match up uh, that. Um, those colors, those different colors with the gamma ray values themselves. So we'll see the, the yellows here, each segmented uh, into one foot um, uh, sections of the line. You can start to colorize those lower values to indicate maybe a sand horizon and also the higher uh, gamma ray values here, maybe indicating uh, a shale layer. Uh, the last thing to show you is uh, the seismic 3D import uh, as a multi-patch. Uh, so if I tick those on, 
they should uh, load in pretty quickly. And I'll just flip over to a bookmark just to show you that that is a full uh, 3D survey. I think I had uh, every 20 inlines uh, to make a multi-patch. And that just allows, again, some, some excellent uh, visualization opportunities uh, in uh, an area uh, such as this uh, in Arches Pro's uh, 3D window. That's the end of uh, the DA demo from my side, um, unless there are any questions. OK, thanks, Rich. OK, that was a great demo, Rich. Thanks for that. And um, if anyone has any questions about what they've seen today with Data Assistant or any other way that Expedat can, can help you in your oil and gas GIS workflows, feel free to contact us uh, on the email address shown on the screen, info at expedat.com. And with that, I'll hand back to our colleagues at Esri. Thank you.